Ladies and gentlemen, just a reminder before we start the Braille and Dumb Show here that the Braille and Dumb Show is brought to you by the one, the only, Celsius. If you ain't drinking Celsius, shame on you. Let's bring in the fellas. Let's bring in the fellas. Let's bring in the fellas. We got Joey D in the house, and of course, we have Mikey V in the house as well. And my, oh, oh my, Mikey V with the full um suit here Gentlemen, joey d please. what do what do we have well here? you know you know you know you got to go to certain functions when you're a grown man and you have to uh show face and you have to appear bob sipping some pinot noir this evening yeah, yeah. and that's just the way we like to see it that's just yeah. the way we like to start joseph good to see you my friend teeth are looking iridescent white this evening which is always a good sign to start <laughs> yeah, the program they do. yeah extra white extra white good for you how mikey v what what are you all dressed up for I had a uh, function this evening, a holiday party. You know, the holiday parties, they put a lot of stress on the family. You know, I'm just loaded with these holiday parties. It's almost every other day now. And uh, <clears throat> a lot of stress. Uh, hats off to my wife, tip of the cap to Holly V for being able to manage and, and uh, guide the ship through these uh, through the storm of these holiday parties that come, quite frankly, fast and furious. And, uh, you know, it's not fair to anybody, but it's, you know, you got to do your duty and due diligence uh, as a yeah. man. Now, Mikey, I, I will say, I see you doing, like, at a holiday party or one of these functions, I see you doing very well at one of these things. I really yeah, do. I thrive. I thrive in, in these type of environments. You know, I'm a big, uh, you know, I like to politic. I like to shake hands and kiss babies. And, uh, <laughs> you know, um, I try to do what I can to make people happy, Bob. And and I'm a sociable guy. I think I'm a guy that I could, you know, I could get along with pretty much anybody. I could talk to anybody. Um and open up to anybody once once you're on my good side bob i open up i open up quite easily so i'm i'm an open book i'm transparent there's no question about it uh but you know some people you know don't like to approach me i don't know what it is i i will say i think one of the keys to one of these functions even you know holiday parties weddings or whatever is just knowing when the conversation's done yeah and and, yeah. and having a good hour and something that i've learned is there's there's nothing wrong with just initiating that the conversation's done, you know, like all right, I'll catch you later. You have to walk on. away. Exactly. You, you have to be it. able to walk away. You totally. have to be able to. And no, yeah, knowing when to walk away, I think, for one of these holiday bars is the biggest thing. And by the way, not fearing, you know, I think a lot of people fear having like being like alone and not in a conversation for a certain amount of time. Don't mm -hmm. don't fear that. Let the game come to you. Well, see, you know what helps with that, Bob, is if you have a party that has like past hors d'oeuvres or food or something, that really takes a load off because you could sit there with the plate of food and make it look like you're doing something when you're really doing nothing at all. And I, I yeah. feel like I am, I'll always be that guy. If you leave on a high note, that is a very high social intelligence like that that's a high characteristic and for someone who's well spoken like you are and Mikey V is very very well spoken um i think you generally you you need to know within a minute or two before the conversation ends that it's dead and you need to move on and both uh, parties know both parties know when I don't even know it is asking where know. the bathroom is i need to get to the yeah. restroom i'll be back or oh i just saw someone i'll catch you later there's different techniques, but you got I think the, the thing is, is like, too, if uh, if you see somebody who like, for instance, tonight, I saw a lot of people who um, I see often, but I see at a distance and I don't necessarily strike up a conversation. But tonight was a little more of an intimate gathering. So I had to, you know, go forward and make conversation. But you make a conversation. I can I can pretty much talk to a garbage can if you gave me the opportunity to do it. <laughs> Um, but then I think the best thing to do is like you you, str you strike up some type of conversation in which a joke is made or something where it's like off a laugh. And then it's kind of like you have your laugh. You've been there for five minutes tops, I think, with somebody like that five minutes. And then you just kind of you just the, it's usually there's so many other people there. It's like you feel that comfortability of all right, that's it. And then you just walk away. But you go to the bar, you get another drink, you go to the hors d'oeuvre table, you get another you know, a little plate or something. And you just, you gracefully exit, no awkward exits. And I think it, it does take a certain type of uh, type of skill, but 
you have to be able to walk away because nobody wants to just stand there in silence. That's the, that's the most worst is when you see someone, you know, you have to say hi, who you don't want to say hi. Oh yeah. And it's like the social obligation is there and you know it, but you dread it and you go in and it's like, sometimes it's hard for me to put the face on. It's like, you know, Oh, Hey, how's it going? And I feel like, that's not good for me because they know that I don't want to talk to them. Well, you know, I wish there could be a camera for where when <laughs> me and Joe were working at the hotel, the <laughs> difference between, you know, Joe's more the type where, Joe, if he don't like you, he's got no in, he's got no desire to talk to you. He's not going to, whereas I think I played the politics game a little bit more. But that's the thing with Joey D. You, and as you know, Mikey V, he's going to let you know. He's got, if he doesn't have time yeah. for you, he don't, he don't have time for I you. give very little to people I don't care about because what I'm an open book. You, <laughs> you know I don't I you give know I don't very like little you. It's like what are you that's, what are you that's well put. That's well put. As I Bob just, it's, it's like there's no point. It's like it's excruciating <laughs> trying to talk to somebody you have no desire to talk to. Whereas yeah. Bob would talk to them for 10 minutes, they'd leave, the whole crew would be riding, and he'd look at me and be like, God, I really fucking hate that guy. And I'd be like, Dude, you just put on a fucking you show. Know, my you know? my cousin I'll, was. We'll talk cousin, to anybody. My cousin was doing an impression of me last night at at dinner, and he was talking to me at this one golf tournament and this group, you know, that I was talking to this other golf group, and uh, you know, he's doing an impression of me talking to them and being all nice to them, and then I like I turn around to him, I'm like, you know, Jay, I can't stand those sons of bitches. Like I I can't stand those fucking guys, and he did it. My voice. It was a fucking riot. But yeah, you got to know when to. And then, you know, the other thing that bothers me, Mikey V, is what amazes me is, A, some people just don't know when, you know, when to stop or whatever. But, and not even just so more holiday parties. The thing that I've seen is having a conversation some with somebody that maybe you just met or whatever, and they just talk about it, just all about them rather than the crossfire oh. back. And forth. It's like, how do you not see, how have we been in a conversation with this? Whole, you haven't asked one thing about me. You know what I mean? And there's so many, and there's just no awareness. Yeah. I think that depends on the environment of, of the party. And if you're at a party where there's like, you know, people of, you know, I don't know. I don't want to say high esteem, but people that are, you know, of, of that consider themselves the upper echelon of whatever profession that they're in. That's something that you could run into. And that's where you just got to knock them down a couple pegs. You know, I, I I think, I think you got to throw in a little joke and just poke a little jab. And usually people that are in those positions are able to roll with those punches because they're, if they're in those positions and they've gotten to that point, it means that they're, you know, socially aware and have enough emotional intelligence to understand that uh, I have to be able to laugh at myself a little bit. And if they can't, then that's that's a big red flag. But I think that they wouldn't be where they are uh, if they couldn't handle that. But uh, that's absolutely true. Nobody wants to sit there for five minutes and you're just going to tell me about your job, your kids, your wife, it's all about uh, that. everything you're doing. Uh, nobody wants to do that. It's a, it's a, it's definitely a ping pong game back and forth. Back Part and forth. of the problem is a lot of people don't even know these things. So there's just, there's cluelessness. All I wish in school, take geometry out, put a subject like this. And it has wrong. so much more relative. You're not wrong. You're it it not has wrong. so much more relativity to business to social encounters, to friendships, wrong. to different, I mean, something like that could enhance. I tell you this, I haven't used trigonometry once in my entire existence. <laughs> well, I mean, also, I too, haven't used I it wish. once. Who needs to know what a hexagon is? Like, I don't need to point? know what, uh, you know, how many molecular cells are in, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I've never used the periodic table of elements once in my entire These existence. These are real life things that could actually help enhance someone to thrive in a business setting, in a relationship, in different outings, just from a social, you know, point of view. Bob, you're yep. looking very confused. Are you not in agreement? No, I, I, I would, I agree. I, I think my three. If I could add something in in schools that that would teach you something that they never have taught me, that I would love to add in, into the system. And there's three things that I would definitely take out. You know, algebra and all that stuff being one of them. Um, is taxes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, oh, I think yeah. I think there's got to be a guy who wishes he learned taxes early on. Bet your ass. You know, bet you know, you know, yeah, ready. Oh, oh yeah. No, he got <laughs> out. Uncle Sam's about to bend me over in a bad uh, way. I, <laughs> I, taxes is one of them. Um, how to how to buy a house? Mortgages. 
and all of that shit. Yeah. yeah. And then and just I, social yeah. awareness. Yeah, I agree That's with that. Class, I agree but... with that a hundred percent. I agree with that. I would have much rather been prepared for those type of situations. Uh, any type of, you know, balancing of a checkbook, and which go. isn't really oh, just God. interest, interest rates, credit, uh, things of that nature. They're just so much more applicable to everyday life as opposed to, again, you know, biology. And, and, and I mean, listen, you know, I just think those type of courses should be reserved for the for the, you know, secondary education when you're in college, you know, when you're specifying your education, not so much as core classes in high school. But then again, who who am I and who are we? You know, we're, we're not, we have a pretty good insight on life. So I think we speak think, for the masses. You know, look, I don't want to pat ourselves on the back, but <laughs> voice of the voiceless. I, I do think we, we think caught somebody say the voice of the voiceless. Some yeah, would I, say, I, Joe. I think we caught the better half of that. I, I really can honestly yeah. confidently yeah. say that the three of us sitting here right now have caught the better half of social well, by, by the grace of God. By the grace of God. I mean, but look, some people <laughs> might disagree. Some might disagree. I think we caught the better half. I, I'm, I agree. I'm, I'm happy where we're at. Um, I agree. Okay. Well, I'm glad. Um, is anybody is anybody else bothered by anything? Is there something else that you guys want to get off your chest? Well, I think it's a good start. Yeah, I, but I mean, you know, I got a couple sells, but I'll wait till the buy and sell. I got a couple things bothering me, but you know what? Not, not much. It's a, you know what? I've really tried to be in the best. I feel like the last couple of years with the COVID um, has really affected the holiday seasons. Last Christmas, I couldn't even really uh, be with my family because I got COVID, I if you remember, that. right before yeah, Christmas do. Eve. So I'm really trying to be in like the ultimate Christmas mood this year. I got the music going every day. We decorated the house. The kids are enjoying it. Uh, I just think this year, everybody should just buy all in. I understand if people aren't into certain aspects of it, but I really think this year is an opportunity. It just feels like this year, everyone is kind of back all in because the last couple of years were so off. And this year is the first year where I kind of have like that old school feeling where there's a big turnout at all these parties. Like all these parties are mobbed that I'm going to, as opposed, obviously restrictions aside, it just feels like this year, it's kind of like that return to pre COVID um, enthusiasm with the holidays. And I would, I would advocate for that. I think it's important. I, I would actually say I'll even double down and say that now new year's Eve, I think oh, wow. new year's is going to be yeah. a rager because, you know, people have really, you know, been looking forward to getting out. And I, I think even New Year's is going to be that much more even wild. But yeah, people seem to be all in on Christmas. Look, I'm all in on Christmas. Um, Something that I do want to say, I'm going to be honest with you guys. And, and Joe, like it or not, but I think you got to give me credit on it. Okay. And it took a long time to, to get done. Uh, We were flying back from Florida. And oh. I, I shit you not, Mikey, I gave... Everything I had into the Godfather, I you gave nothing. You gave no, nothing. No, no. I, really... I was gonna, I was gonna say it, and you open, you open that clam. So let me just address it very quickly, and then Bob, you can have the floor. <laughs> the fact that you would would try and view the Godfather on an airplane television is just a disgrace to cinematography, a disgrace to Francis, Francis Ford Coppola, a disgrace to that film that that would be the venue that you deemed appropriate. God knows what you did on that Florida trip. You you were banged up for 80 days in a row doing all right. and And then he's going to try and view The Godfather on the airplane ride. What kind of effort is that? That is absolutely minimalistic at best. Horrible, horrible effort by Bob. And now he's going to try and say, I gave it everything uh, I had. I, Come on. I think you need to sit yourself down on a non-football day at home, sit on the couch, order it on your big Mikey. screen television. Mikey. And you're trying to tell me you're watching on a seven inch airline TV yeah, on the back of a, of a fucking headrest. And oh. you're going to tell me you gave it everything While the you person had. in front of him is bashing the seat. Yeah, back. yeah, yeah. <laughs> His ears are popping. There's no proper audio. It's not in 4K. It's not in HD. Well, That's terrible. I Turn will say. Anthony Bourdain. <laughs> I saw I Anthony. More comments on that so what story. happened, Bob? What happened? Tell me what he happened. Watched, you watched it. He watched Luca Brasi get fucking murdered, and he just turned it off. Folks, our next sponsor. 
is a sponsor that I just so happen to use and take every single day, a product that I use and take every single day, Athletic Greens. You cannot go wrong when you're taking Athletic Greens. I wanted better mental health, physical health, gut health, and that is exactly what Athletic Greens does. You cannot go wrong when you go Athletic Greens. With one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you are absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens. You can't go wrong. It starts your day right. I do it. I take one scoop of the Athletic Greens, down it with the water, and I am good to go. Mentally, I feel great. Physically, I feel great. After a workout, I use it, and it is absolutely terrific. Now, to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash dumb. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash dumb. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. Do it with Athletic Greens. You can't go wrong. While I, I'll be the first... <laughs> Look, I'll be the first to tell you, I get I get the airplane thing because honestly, I kept trying to do the subtitles in the so that I could read it because honestly, the audio captions, co- does captions. The captions, correct. Right, right. It comes out a little bit, it does come out a little bit shaky. So yeah, I no I, shit, Bob. You're in a fucking air airplane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It yeah. came out a little bit shaky, but I will tell you this. Look, if I watch Remember the Titans on the airplane, I would love it the same way that I watched it if I was watching it in my living room to work. And by the way. Yes, I did go back and forth. I would do Godfather, Anthony Bourdain, and then back to Godfather, <laughs> then to Anthony Bourdain. This is so insane, man. And I kept going back because I said, I want to I wanna fight through this. Like, I, I want to fight. It just is the most slow-moving. There are so many scenes in there that don't even need to be in there. The, I mean, by the way, the the, the, the the wedding in the beginning was the most dragged out. one of the... What are you it's an epic scene. That's it's an a epic scene, scene that scene sets the it... tone for the Godfather himself that he cannot refuse a favor on his daughter's wedding yes. day. That's that's this that's to set the scene. I mean, fuck. <laughs> just and I'm being a, and Mike. I really want it. I want it to come on here so bad. Like when the horse head was in the in the pit in the bed. What was box? he laughing? He had to be laughing that it was. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, like. <laughs> I was like, fuck, what are we doing here? Because Ticket point hits me. I was on the end. Ticket was in the middle and Bob was on the other end. And Ticket hits me. He's like, the big scene is coming with the horse. And I look over at Bob. Bob's just like, like staring all just disgruntled. He was not in. I mean, I don't know. The problem with Bob is you need to stimulate him within the first five minutes or you've lost him for the next hour. And yeah, just, listen, I love Bob, but stimulating him is not something that I'm going to ever sign no. up for. That's for sure. <laughs> that's that's for sure. But the fact that he thinks the air air airplane viewing was an appropriate venue to view is is really discouraging. <laughs> I think he owes it to himself to just sit back and try and do it on a regular. But I don't know. Well, the attention span, just I don't know if it's there. I don't yeah, know if it's, it's there. It's, and for Bob to say that it's a it's such a slow movie and they should have oh. edited out parts of the movie. And I mean, this is a top five movie of all time. I don't get, look. Time. And by the way, you don't think that I think to myself, clearly it, it is one of the best movies of all time. If you, if you listen to the way people talk about it. So it, it so was do you frustrating think this is me. a you problem or an everyone else problem. It's Obviously absolutely. I guess it, I guess it's me, which is what I bothers agree. me, but I, agree. I can't, <laughs> I can't wrap my head around what, what, I mean, Goodfellas is action packed. It's boom, boom, boom. It's fun. It's, it, it's different. Type oh of movie. God. It was like, it was filmed it, on a Motorola. You can't, you can't finish assessing a movie and giving your, your Cole's notes on it. If you watch a quarter of the movie, I know, you but you got to get me at some point, Joe, I get the first 20 minutes, but I was hanging in. I was really hanging in there. It just, I mean, it just... Here's the thing for me. If this was the first time that it happened, I could say, okay, maybe it's not Bob's style of movie. But this happens all the time. Yeah. It's very rare that you find a movie 
that he'll strap in and watch start to finish. The guy, the guy only likes Disney live action sports movies. That's <laughs> that's his genre. That's his wheelhouse. It's quite obvious. That's his only. That's his. That's his favorite genre. It, it is what it is. Oh it is God. I'm well, just I, just it's a shame. I, still, I still love you. I'll support you. But now let me <laughs> let me ask let me ask you guys this, okay? Because I really did. I really wanted to get into this. What would be Mikey V and Cole Cuts? And whether you guys need time with it, fine. We can move on a little bit. But I would like you guys to give the next movie that I need to be watching because here's the deal: Godfather was a fail. It was a complete utter. <laughs> It really what was. was. The last one I said he had to watch that we were talking about. I said he had you to. Guys really watch. You guys got to agree on a movie. And look, oh, I Ratatouille. will watch it. Ratatouille, Ratatouille will yeah, be my next one. Ratatouille. Because this we've is gone, completely we've gone different. From Godfather the... to Ratatouille. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Brilliantly Dumb oh, Show. Bob, yeah, you ain't fucking kidding. I actually think Bob will like Ratatouille because it's a completely different style movie. It's about food. It's it, it's kind of fun it's a and great it's, movie. It's, I'll I gave Ratatouille. I would. I, I really would. I, I would you absolutely. Watch this before the next pod, <laughs> and then give us your. We should do reviews with Bob. I, I want to with Bob. Yeah, and by the way, I'm going to be honest. Like with the Godfather, well, I um, wanted you know, to you turned off Godfather after 15 minutes. Yeah, and another thing I will say, I <laughs> Anthony Bourdain can make drinking a beer look more enjoyable than any. But you ever get an Anthony Bourdain, Mikey V? No, I'm not a big fan. Oh well, well, I don't know where we go from my, there. Uh, but rest, listen, I think, rest, I think Bobby. I, mean, I think geez, talk I think, about just stomping think, on the guy. I, I, mean, I think Jesus. I think Bo- I think Bobby Blockbusters could be a real real hit. <laughs> yeah, Bobby Blockbuster. Bobby Blockbuster could be a real. We should I actually could carve be a in a little segment. Yep, a five yep. minute segment where yep. he reviews the last movie, and we could take in uh, even we could have people give comments about what they want to see him watch next. Yes, and so Bobby sick. would actually be helpful for you to start. You'd start advancing your knowledge within the cinematic, you know, I want realm. to. Uh, yeah, I, I, I really do. And by the way, I know I'm going to get buried in the comments, and that's okay because, you know, that's the beauty right. of Blobby Blockbusters, he's going to tell you how he sees it. He really yeah, is. That's so, fine. so I think, I think, um, <laughs> oh my God. I, I this think a whole new segment. I really like, this. yeah, I think Ratatouille is going to be the next one. So by that's, the way, that's a good I don't one. Know if either of you guys have watched this. I've started watching this show and I'm hooked. The White Lotus. Have you guys yeah, seen Yeah, Holly loves that show. Yeah, you are just you you see these things, man. No, 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 no. I haven't I haven't watched White Lotus. Did, but my, did I Holly, know my wife, my wife does did I highly did for she, White Lotus. Did she start it without you? Yeah, but it was a mutual agreement. She asked me if I wanted to watch it. I said absolutely not. I have no interest. I watched something else. I was watching uh <clears throat> I was watching a um a Netflix series that was like a horror series series and holly is not into horror at all so i Which watched one, that i watched a show called dark on netflix it's german uh subtitled so that's okay. a little rough for some people Whoa. but i heard rave reviews about it it's very good however um if you look at your phone for even two seconds you have to re-watch the entire episode because you miss <laughs> literally and that's difficult that's difficult yeah. especially for gentlemen like us who have to be in touch with a lot of things going on in the interwebs. That could be, that could be difficult, but um, no, but she is a big advocate for white Lotus though. My wife loves white Lotus. Yeah. I just started watching the first season. Apparently there's a second season and I was telling Bob, I think the season started... finale was last night, Joe. I think last yeah, night I know. was like a season. I'm, finale. I'm way behind. Okay. I'm way behind, but I have been hearing good things about it. And, and I tell you what it's filmed by the way, Mikey, I watched the first episode. I recognize it's the best hotel I've ever stayed at in my life. Okay. The Four Seasons Wailea in Maui. Four Seasons. Let me tell you something. Oh, four, my four Seasons. God. When this when, when Holly and I when Holly and I did our honeymoon, we went to Four Seasons of Bora Bora in Tahiti. And let me explain oh, something. Wow. The treatment that these people give you there, they make you feel like you are like. Uh, you, uh, we talked about the Kardashians last episode. They put you on a level to which you really feel like that. First of all, they charter you over to the hotel on a private boat. They, t- Your luggage, you don't check in. You know, every hotel, you got to check in at the front desk. There's no check-in. They bring you right to your Curbside. room on a golf cart. They drive you right to the room. Your luggage is there. No check-in. No standing in line like an asshole at the front lobby desk with all the peons. You just go right to your room. <laughs> The breakfast spread 
Everything is just oh, so. The breakfast I think party. I told this story. We had a dinner reservation the first <laughs> night. They made us wait five minutes. We the, the dinner reservation was late. Five minutes. Five minutes. They couldn't see us. They sent a basket of fruit and a champagne bottle to our hotel room the next day because we waited five extra minutes. And who cares about waiting five extra minutes when you're on your honeymoon? I'll tell you, fucking Tahiti. I mean, that's where you what? almost want to wait half an hour. Yes, when, um, yes, when, <laughs> yes. When me and Joe worked at the Four Seasons, I, a lot of this stuff I would think, oh, this is extra. Like, do we really have to do this? Or yes, you know, you they're do. overkilling it. Yeah, no, when you best. go, when you stay at one of these places, you do realize it's that all of this stuff really, really. I mean, it really counts and. It really goes a long way it does bro it does. Um, it was so over the top this it was just so over the top accommodating so over the top uh it was just the best experience hotel wise i've ever had by i uh i was i was out to dinner the other night and i probably shouldn't be saying this but but i will and i i, I snapped i um there was this guy and you know he he just was so pompous it was a birthday big birthday dinner and this guy was so pompous he was so full of himself and he just was so brash and it was just one thing after that one thing after the other and he's talking about how he went on his honeymoon at four seasons maui and he goes yeah you know four seasons maui really rubbed me the wrong way and i put my drink down i said do you know how wow. ridiculous you sound I said, do you know how obnoxious how? of a comment what, what, what that happened there that the was not good four enough? Se- I mean, think about that comment. The right. Four Seasons Maui really right. rubbed the me the wrong way. Right. What a pompous. Just, what, what hotel um, do you, what hotel do you, what an obnoxious that's that's- comment to make, which just absolutely obnoxious. Um, But yeah. Good I for mean, you for saying something. I did. Yeah, I sure did. Joe. And I did it in a, in a <laughs> funny way. Say? I said, I said, wow. I said, wow, boy, did you really make it? Whenever you're saying that, you know, the Four Seasons <laughs> Maui really rubbed you the wrong way. You must be doing okay. Yeah, I really, um, it just bothered. It was enough is enough. Yeah, that's, just, that's, that's not like confrontation. For I don't. Him to say something like that, it takes a lot. The last time I had a confrontation before that was in Italy when the guy yeah, yelled at me the in the sauna. That was the <laughs> last, <laughs> that was the last conversation I had. You're out of line. <laughs> you know, you're you're, you're out, out of line. line. Yeah. You fucking need to take a flipper and whack you on the side of the head. Bro. I know. Like, <laughs> nobody hears that, Nilly. You're out of line. That was the most ridiculous thing. Of course, for Milan, Italy, you're out of line. You're out of line. Yeah, the sauna. Um. Oh God! Right, by the way, it good. feels good to be back. By the way, yes, it does. Uh, we missed a week. I hate missing weeks Me now because my DMs. I don't know about your guys. They just get littered with people who are pissed off, yeah. and I'm happy that they yeah. that they, that they um, do. Show their I mean, we did do that. We did do the live stream last week. It wasn't like we just left people with nothing. I mean, yeah, I, I will say it's though, different. I, do, I guess I do agree with Joe though. I mean, I woke up like when I put out the the announcement that we didn't have the episode. To see the amount, I mean, people were really upset. Yeah. For it, it was almost, I was almost Man. happy to see it. Like I felt bad, but it was happy to see that. Cause, you know, the thing with podcasts, I have a select few podcasts that I listen to. It really, it's a part of your routine and it, it mm. takes you out of routine. People get very, very upset. And I think it's great. We're back. We're so back. We are back. And we, by the way, this is the growing movement that we have here now. You know, I'd like to think that, you know, the podcast, what has it been, Bob? One year or a little bit over a year that over a year, yeah. Over a year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It yeah. hasn't been that long though, if you think about what you know. No, and by the way, I... last it started last football season was right around the time when I came out. I made the DK Metcalf pick. That was like two, three weeks into the season. I meant I meant to text you guys today actually. Our audio downloads between and we do good numbers on YouTube. The the audio numbers are continued to rise. So the That's look. Good. Billy Dumb Show. I mean, look, things in the works, and yeah. Um, all right. I do want to get into the buy or sell segment. We're going to be doing the buy or sell segment. People tend to love the buy or sell segment. Um, I, if I may, I, I'd love to actually go ahead and just start us off here, gentlemen. Um, very, very excited about Christmas. I love Christmas. Um, I really do. Mm. But with 
that but when I was a kid, by the way, so I'm I'm half Jewish, I guess you could say. My parents kind of gave us the option of what we wanted to go with, and they would have just rolled with whatever we decided to do. I'm happy we did Christmas because Christmas has the whole build up and everything. Um, uh, I mean, Adam Sandler is carrying Hanukkah. After after that, it's tough. You know, it doesn't have a whole lot of PR. Um, so I chose Christmas. I'm happy to Christmas. The only thing that I will say that I think is so overhyped, and if it was this good, it would be not just a seasonal thing. And I I consider it the same thing as stuffing for Thanksgiving. Eggnog just doesn't do yes. it for me. It, it um, people <laughs> love the. Bad. I know, but you know what, Joe? If if it was that good, people would order an eggnog in the spring, and people wouldn't look at you like you were crazy. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's it's imagine it's, being at a beach bar in the summer. And yeah. get eggnog. Well, it's a heavy cream. It's like something yeah. you gotta have when it's cold outside. That's why it's restrained to it's like a white Russian. Be- yeah, but they yeah. don't order it. They don't do it in the fall. And once you know, have they you don't- done it with? Have you had it with rum, Bob? I think I've had every eggnog every way you can get it. Yeah. I just think it's like if it was that with a little with a little dash of cinnamon is not a bad thing on Christmas Eve. On Christmas no, Eve, it's not a bad thing. What about but I, you know, it is limited. It's it's a limited thing. It's limited. Yeah, it is this it is the stuffing of, of Christmas. Same thing with stuffing. I think stuffing's really good, but there's a reason that it only comes, you know, along when it does. I, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna sell eggnog and I'm gonna pass it over to Maggie V. Yeah, I got to sell um I'm I'm selling something very very uh weird I guess, but I'm going to sell no. <laughs> okay. I'm going to sell discovery and exploration. That's what I'm going to sell and and by that I'm talking specifically about this. Have you guys heard about this zombie virus that they uncovered in yeah. the uh yeah, in this yeah. Russian Siberian uh, permafrost? Let me explain something to you guys. We as a as a world right now, um we've been under fire with just too much going on that we can't handle. There is no reason, absolutely zero reason that we should be trying to discover and explore new things right now. We just need to press the pause button on discovery and exploration and just try and fix what the fuck we got going on. Because if we're going to continue to do this and now we're unearthing, uh, they, they took some kind of virus out of like a 30,000 year old intestinal track of a, uh, of a, of some kind of a, a, a wolf or something that was in the permafrost and these viruses that existed 30,000 years ago, they're going to unearth these and release them into the atmosphere and potentially release another pandemic. We need to just hit the pause button on discovery and exploration. Let's fix what we got going on right, right. now. Stop doing this. Just stop. Nobody Bye. needs to discover a new species. Nobody needs to discover. A, a, am I wrong? What? No, no, I have let him no know. idea what he just said. Like, I, I have no idea. I know exactly what he's talking okay, about. Bob. I, I have none. I am. Okay. So, so Bob, basically what happened it. was uh, the permafrost in Siberia, I believe, was uh, they're yes. blaming it on, on the warming of the climate that the permafrost is melting but in the process explorers and scientists are digging up these old sections of the earth that have been in it you know basically encompassed and 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 buried in ice for tens of thousands of years and by doing so there's these viruses and bacteria that are living that have been you know dormant for all these tens of thousands of years and they're like, oh, this is a this is a zombie virus that's 30,000 years old that if released back into the atmosphere once again and became active, it could create another pandemic, possibly worse than COVID. So my thing is, is that we need to stop doing, stop exploring, stop discovering. I think we've had enough. I don't think we need anything new for at least, I would say, 20 well, years. Every, I think I 20 mean, years, we could put a 20-year pause on discovery discovery and ex- exploration. That's my well, opinion. Like, you then you're going to wipe out every archaeologist in the world. I don't really give a fuck. I got to be honest, <laughs> because archaeologist to me is like, that's just a guy who liked to dig in his backyard, and now he turned it into a career. And these guys are getting paid to dig up fossils and dinosaur bones and things of that nature. And to be honest, we need more help and more more critical areas of science than discovery discovery and exploration that's just discover and explore into outer space not on the earth just leave the earth alone for a while the earth has been under enough pressure the earth has taken a beating it's taken a beating and eventually we're going to do something so fucking stupid that it's going to cost us big time you can mark that down it's going to cost us big time joe 
And and you know what? I'll be the one here t- saying I told you so. If I'm still here, I might be I'm wiped out by the No, don't say that, Mikey V. I'm not saying I, I could be Bob. Because you know what? I'm if you go out the room, I'm just saying is that you. you know you're going to wipe out a whole profession of men and women who've devoted their lives to unearthing some of life's mysteries. Yeah, stop doing it. I'm going <laughs> to say you got to stop doing it for the good of for the good of humanity, Joe. I do. I do agree that we've been. There has been so much shit. In the last few yes. years, give us a break. If we're gonna give go us down, a break. don't that's let all us I'm asking for is a break. A little <laughs> hiatus, a little hiatus from discovery and exploration. That's all I'm selling. Discovery. Fair and point. That's all. Joey D. Good luck following I'm that. Take it tough. down a notch. Uh, I I am going to also sell, and I'm going to sell AirPods right here, right now. I'm telling you why, okay? And by the way, shame on me, Mikey V. I just bought a new pair. These Good things are fucking pointless, okay? The yeah. first thing is the one ear pod stopped working. I had the older generation. So the thing doesn't work. So only one ear is working. I didn't want to go spend another $200. I say, whatever, fuck it. I'm going to go buy the new one. That's a write off, barely... by the way. That's a write off. I'm go- I kept the receipt. Cold Cuts LLC. Joey Cold Cuts LLC. That's yeah, JCC LLC. Shout out. Yeah. Write it off. Yep. I, I will be, but Especially. that's neither here nor there. The point is the new ones, they don't fit well in your ears. It feels like they're hanging out by a thread. I go in the fucking airplane. I can't plug them into the fucking screen. So I'm asking the fucking stewardess to give me a $2 pair of fucking garbage headphones. And these $250 AirPods are sitting in my pocket. They're not even being used. You got to fucking charge them up all the time. They're dead half the time. You fucking leave one out. God forbid the whole set's gone. It's a fucking joke. I tell you a guy who's just nodding nodding his head with smug approval is the guy with the non-AirPod iPhone (laughs) headphones in right now. Well, he's got the AirPods too, and shame on me. I just bought the new ones. But this is the point is that we're slaves to capitalism and consumerism because I go out and buy a new And these things are garbage. socialists now, Joe? Come on. We're going to bash capitalism now, Joe? Come on. I'm not bashing capitalism, but I'm saying – it's just these things they put out and everybody just buys them because they're the newest Apple Yeah, product. Apple has that power, though. Apple will just release a new generation no matter what it is, and people are just going like, to consume it. That's I what Apple this does. Here. This is the 13, whatever, Pro, whatever. The 14's out now, and by the time the 15 comes out, I know you have the 14, I'm going to say, oh, the camera's not up to par. I got to get this. I got to get that. They have you buy the right off. <laughs> that. That's well, a uh... I don't understand the it's just like I don't I don't get well, it and then the uh, lady's like oh you sure you don't want to spend an extra fifty dollars for the noise cancellation fucking uh, app that they have I'm like I don't need it I'll tell you it's this just, it's a waste I uh, you know they get you now with the with the new chargers now it's got to be the oh, different chargers and oh look, god I, I mean I I hate to say it because I agree it's very frustrating Apple just has the world by the balls and they're they allowed to do they what they want to do. And the world's then got to carry to them. And you're not wrong, Joey D you're not wrong, but no, that's the thing. Steve Jobs they, died. Everybody was screwed because now it's his legacy that we have to keep buying this product. And the, by the way, I love, I love Apple. I have everything Apple. I brought my laptop with me. I forgot the charger. I have an older laptop. We had jet Perez ticket and Bob all had their Apple laptops on and I couldn't use their chargers because it's a new fucking charger. And so God the laptop forbid. was dead. I had to use Perez's fucking laptop to do a podcast. Can't be an Android guy either because then if you're an Android, you are just oh, a disruption to society. Yeah. If you are green, an Android Nobody guy, wants to see a green bubble. Nobody yeah, wants to see a green oh, bubble. Awful. Nobody. It drives me nuts. Nobody. It, it drives me that's I the love thing, Apple, Apple, but it's like, come on. Make now, Apple little- Apple has those new big over-the-ear headphones. Has anyone dabbled Take in those? Those look... Ticket has them. What does he say about them? Well, apparently they do noise cancellation. He tried on Bob and it didn't work. I don't. I don't know. By, man. by the way, he the the big ticket really really <laughs> fucked me over. I'm going to do it regardless. He turned to me on the airplane and and said, "If you think Godfather's bad, you're going to hate Ratatouille." He he's been in my ear about this whole Ratatouille thing. By the what? way, yep, he's been in my ear about anti Ratatouille. He's he's been I think you're going to really like this. Oh. Yeah, it's really that that is. 
But something that I will say about the flight too, okay? And I'm going to sound like the guy who said that, you know, Four Seasons Maui you know, rubbed him the wrong way. Delta. But Delta. on the flight, stuff, if, you, if you're if you over a four-hour flight and you don't have either the, the plug-in for the charger, okay, Ooh. or the in-flight Wi-Fi, I mean, we've been so spoiled with the in-flight Wi-Fi. I, you could give me a 10-hour flight. You give me in-flight Wi-Fi, I'm fine. I'll be firing stuff out left and right. No one fly Wi Fi. You didn't well, have to had plug it, in. Bob. It was twenty nine dollars, and the stuff didn't it work. was like Wi Fi that they provided during the Cold War. It, it was, was so slow, I couldn't even load a video on Instagram. Yeah. The by the way, War. you know who we passed by on the flight? I was going to give him a little fist bump, and I chickened out. He was just watching game film of her in Rodney Harrison. Oh, Rodney! Nice and comfy in the first class. Very, very thick guy, and I, I wanted to him. give him a little fist bump, but. Um, to no avail because he didn't see me. But um, without further ado, gentlemen, and Joey D, I, I, I hear you on the air, but also do they're a little too techy, I think, like with the you double tap for the cancellation, then you double tap for Siri. I just want headphones that, you know, just start me on up, but the world because runs. The world don't fix it. The ones you have in right now are good. That's a good headphone. Yeah, but now Apple's made it to where I need the connector to connect that into oh, the. Geez. They got the world by the balls. Well, they, they make got, they yep. just keep making it more more and more difficult to the point where you end up having to get the new stuff because so, it's like buying an old car, like they run out of the old parts. So, so if you want to get it fixed, do we have that's three cells, Mikey? Remind me of what you sold again. Discovery, Discovery and, and exploration. exploration. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, perfect, perfect. Um, all right, well, so without further ado. Um, I think it's time we ought to go into our top five. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, okay? And I hope I am. It's just such a good top five. Have we done this top five? I don't think we have. Have we done top five French no, fries? We, yes. We've done style. No, we've done styles of French fries, yes. but not the actual fast food chain. Correct. If that's the case, then I'm okay with with correct. continuing with correct. that top five. Correct. That's okay. Correct. All right, then if that's fine, then I'm I'm still a okay with continuing that. Um, so today's top five, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be top five fast food French fries. I'm thrilled that we haven't done it because I could do this stuff all day long. Let's start off with Joey D out of the game. All right, I'm ready for this one. Um, at five, I'm gonna put a one that might be skeptical because it's not a it's not a product that remains on the menu consistently throughout the year but when they bring it out yeah, it's a banger dog. you do taco bell nacho fries yeah, it's a great Taco's play food. man great great and i had to put them on my list because they're just so good they got that cajun seasoning on it with the queso sauce that that nacho cheese sauce i think they deserve to be here at the very least honorable mention i'm throwing it out the five spot Give me Taco Bell nacho fries at five. And number four, this one I don't know if it counts because it's not really fast food. So if you want me to remove it, I'll, I'll insert something else in. I'm going to go with Shake Shack and their crinkle cut fries. Now, I like to add even the, the cheese or you could put the topping. You could do like the, the, cheese, the cheese fries, Bob. I don't know if you've tried them. Very, very good. And let's, I love it. Let's, let's, let's send this to the board for approval real quick. Mikey V, are you okay with the, with the Shake Shack? Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't have an issue with it. Okay, fine. Yeah. We're allowed in granted access. Yeah, I don't, I don't have an issue with it. I like a good crinkle cut fry. I think they do some of the best. So I'm going to put them at number four. Number three, we're going to do another style of fry here that I think actually Mikey B had high up on his list when we did styles of fries. I'm going to go Chick fil A waffle fries. And by the way, when That's you add fun. the Chick fil A sauce, I can't imagine. Some a better condiment to dip a fry into than Chick Fil A sauce. It's undefeated in my opinion, and it just it brings the whole experience of eating their fries to the next level. And number two, I'm gonna go. I think these guys they changed their fries up a few years back, and I think they're some of the best in the business. Give me Wendy's. Wendy's wow, French Wendy's getting to the band. two. Really spot. That's a high. That's a high. That's a high. That's a high, spot. I know it's a high but you know what? To me, I think no good for you. They do their, they do what they do well, and I'm I'm gonna give them the acknowledgement they deserve. And at number one, I I would be remiss to not take these guys. It's got to be McDonald's French yep. fries yep. and nothing else. And by the way, a little trick if you ever want, because sometimes you go through the drive through or whatever, they don't give them to you as hot as you want. Say you want extra hot French fries when you go to the drive through, they have got to take it as a personal request, and they have got to make you a fresh batch. 
it comes out piping hot, delightful every fucking time it smacks. You can't so go you wrong. You mean to tell me <laughs> it's your extra hot. that you go into a McDonald's <laughs> drive through at any yes. hour of the day <laughs> and you yell out your window, oh. I would like extra hot French fries. That's correct. That's yeah, and sometimes if I'm if I'm if I'm under the impression that they're not taking the request seriously, I will go as far as to say the last time I got my fries, they weren't so hot. So could I please have them extra hot? They'll put in a brand new batch right under the oil, right when you come oh. to the window. They're turning them up and they're as hot as you've ever had them, Bob. They're so good. It's a little trick. I mean, you can do it if you want. I, mean, I, just, I don't know what the what the what the shame of that is, Bob. I like them. I don't want to have soft cold fries. I just can't. I would be so worried about them spitting in my fry. Like the nerve oh, on this, this jack, motherfucker. This yeah, son yeah, of yeah. a it's bitch. Like a yeah. Starbucks thing you have your person. <laughs> No, it's 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 mandatory. They they never complain about it. It's like when you go to Starbucks and you request your own drink, they have to do it. Right. By the way, it's not like you're asking them to give you fucking Wait. beef fries. You're just asking them or to to cook it in different oil. Like you're just asking them to be extra hot to give you a fresh batch. Okay. All right, let's uh let's send it up. Now I will say, Joey D, I'm very I I love the Shake Shack with the the Taco Bell nacho fries at five. Yeah, that was a KG play. Great, great throw in. Mm-hmm. Wendy's at two is shocking to me. I did not. I got some think... versatility in my list. Well, yeah, I just I'm shocked to see the Wendy's play there. I think Wendy's fries very good. Okay. I really... All right, let's send it over to Mikey V. Ah. All right, number five, I have from a discontinued fast food uh, franchise. I haven't seen them around. There's like one left, I think, somewhere on the New Jersey Turnpike somewhere. Roy Rogers Curly Fries. Roy Rogers, uh, I tell you, Roy Rogers was a special place. It really was. Why it went downhill, I don't know. But if you ever had the Curly Fries from Roy Rogers, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Give me Roy Rogers Curly Fries at number five. They were tremendous. Number four, give me Checkers seasoned French fries. Checkers seasoned French fries. Very good, like almost a Cajun, kind of like a Popeyes-ish fry, but better than Popeyes. Checkers seasoned fries. Number three, give me Chick-fil-A waffle fries at three. I think the waffle fry, as Joe said, is a tremendous play. Uh, you can't go wrong with that. Number uh, number two is going to be a hard debate for me because my number one is an automatic slam dunk. Uh, it's the same as Joe's, but number two, number two is 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 a real tough one for me. Number two, I'm going to have to go with. Oh yeah, it's tough for me, man. It really it, this should be an issue that you're having at five or four. I disagree. A- I I disagree because two it, it was a it's a tough spot. I'm going to go with five guys, French fries. I think five guys has really good fries. Uh, The bag fries where they just toss them in the bag. I think five guys, good fries. And then number one, the undisputed French fry king, I think is the McDonald's fry, whatever the hell they do to it. It just is. There's no fry that you want to grab by the, by the fistful. And I have given McDonald's, as you know, I have been highly critical of McDonald's for some time, but the French fries are, are unbelievable to be honest, but they've been, they've been relying on that for so long. That's the problem with the McDonald's is that they've been resting on their laurels for so long and resting (laughs) on these French fries. They haven't done anything to improve the overall product, but the French fries remain supreme. McDonald's number one. I I, I never uh, tried the Roy Rogers or checkers before. I I kind of wish I would be checkers. I almost had you do it in Florida, Joey D we passed one of Perez off from the Chick-fil-A. Yeah, Checkers has got some bang for sure. <laughs> it does. Um, it does. The only issue I have with Five Guys, okay, is they use the extra fries that they put in the bag because they load it in as they an do. excuse to be able to charge $20, $22 for, for a burgers meal. burgers are great, Bob. We can't put yeah, a price on Yeah, they are, but that's, but that's their play, and they don't think that anybody's on to them. I got news for you, Da. I'm on to them. I'm on to them. They use those extra French fries to be able to to charge the price. By the way, Shake Shack, that's a very expensive burger and fry, a really good one. Five Guys a little more sneaky. I don't I don't also know. Also on to uh, Francis Ford Coppola for his uh, ill-advised use of the wedding scene in The Godfather. <laughs> yeah, everyone, they should have cut that scene out, the opening scene. Okay. All right. Uh, Ratatouille's next. Moving along. Um, I, I do like the list, though, Mikey V. I really do. Um, 
Number five, terrible franchise. There's one thing that they do well. They even tried to change the best thing they do and provide another option. Arby's curly fries. Are yeah, Arby's curly fries are great. Really, really and then Arby's have been trying to make a move. They got to make a move to stay, you know, above water because they're struggling. They they opted to to offer another French fry. That was the way. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. They do these other fries, and they are so poorly run over there. Um, but it's a good fry. Um, five Arby's, four Mikey V. I'm right there with you. Beat for beat, pal. Give me the checkers fry. I got them. there. You go. They do the they do the frozen fries as well. You can buy from the supermarket. If McDonald's did that. I mean, that's another oh, forget it. Ten billion a year, if that. Um, number three. I. Uh, another franchise that has to make a move. They're still afloat and they're here to stay, but they got to make a move, but their fries are good. Give me Burger King at three. I like the Burger King fry a lot. Uh, Mikey Burger V don't King love it. That. Yeah. I, I, you don't like the Burger King fry, Mikey V. I, I, I like it. I just don't think it's, I don't, I mean, I, I don't think it's a top five fry, but that's <laughs> neither here nor there. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. I, I, I don't mind it, but. It ain't the top five, in my opinion. But number two, I got Chick Fil A. Um, yeah. The waffle fry is great. Sometimes I wonder, am I just so in Obsessed enamored with, with the sauce? Well, that Possibly. too, but like with the sauce that the the sauce carries the fry so well. Um, but I do think it, it's it's a great fry. It's one it's of the only fry. waffle fries I think really out there doing it. I think it's the only fast food waffle fry that I know of. I think so too. I think so. Which too. is which is really mind boggling, to yeah. be honest. It's I don't I mean by the way, Joe, you ever have White Castle? White yeah. Castle crinkle cut fries. Really good. Very good. I very know. Good. I That's thought my about honorable mention. Mention. They're very similar to the Shake Shack ones. My honorable yeah. mention, yeah. the White Castle crinkle cut. And then we all got it there at one. I mean, let's not who are we kidding? Let's not get crazy. Right. Give me the McDonald's at one. Uh do the Joey D special, order them extra hot and just pray <laughs> to God they don't spit in those fries. They're and... not gonna spit in the fries. Yeah. By the whole... way, what is your condiment of choice for your like to dip your French fries in? Are you a ketchup guy, Mike Chick- V? Chick fil A. Yeah, ke- ketchup. But I mean, I could dunk a fry in anything. I could dunk it yeah. in mustard, ketchup, uh, really? honey mustard, like, barbecue the, sauce, sweet and sour it. sauce. It doesn't matter. It doesn't. Honey matter. mustard's great. You honey can't fuck. You can't fuck it up. I mean, I've seen people dunk French fries in mayonnaise. I've seen people do that. I, yeah. I do that. I tell you what, the best fucking condiment is the most underrated play is the Wendy's Frosty. Dipping the fry in the Wendy's Frosty. Wow. Is one of the greatest plays. The salt. Well, you feel the, naughty when you the do that. Salty Don't with the sweet. Yeah, naughty. I mean, you do, of course. But I mean, if you eat fast food, you should feel naughty. I mean. By the I, way, a lot of hype around Fat Perez says it's one of the best fries in the game, breakfast or dinner. Um, a lot of hype around the Wendy's breakfast potatoes is what I'm hearing. Haven't really? had it, but a lot yeah, of hype around it. You may have to try hype. that. Yeah, a lot of hype around it. Honorable mention, uh, Mikey V. The White Castle crinkle cut is a great, is a very underrated fry, especially if you're all tuned up and you have White Castle. I mean, that fucking, that'll hit the spot every time. Wendy, uh, almost, White Castle. Yeah, I almost wish I threw it in there. It would have been innovative. It's a good play. I got, I got it right there, too, as my honorable mention. Joey D. I'm going to do five guys for my honorable mention because I do think that they do their fries really well. And I like the abundance that they give you. Like a regular fry is a large fry. People who don't know will order the large fry. Good luck. You're going to have fucking fries for the next week. I think Joey D is going to have a very popular top five fry in the in Yeah, the, yeah the, the Taco Bell is going to hit. I gonna think he's going to have it. Yeah. The, the Wendy's have a lot two... of versatility, I think. I got, I got crinkle cut. I got waffle fries. I got nacho fries. I got... I mean, I just, I, I, I feel like I have a lot to offer. On By the list. way, Bear Downs, Bear sure, Downs ain't do. bad either, but only, you know, such a select few are going to remember the Roy Rogers French fries. The Roy during, Rogers. Yeah. That that's, that's very, that's very, that's very personal pick for me. I, I was a Roy Rogers person. I thought Roy Rogers, I still don't understand why they're gone. I don't get it. I thought they were great. The fried chicken. They did By it all. Way. Roy Rogers. They did it all. By the way, something just to keep track of. I'm looking right now with, this is a different subject, but with Kyler Murray going down tonight, oh. it does appear that the Jet is going to lose. And unless something drastic happens and DeAndre Hopkins, which, by the way, has seven receptions. so Mike Oh, the by five- the way, we won prize picks. 
We yes. won prize picks. That's great. We hit three of four on the flex. We would have hit four of four had Kyler not gone down. So but that is a flex winner. It is three a winner. Of four. And by the prize picks. winner. But I, what I was getting at is now with the Jet looking like he's going to be out, Ticket won this week. Ticket will be taking the number one seed, meaning it looks like Ticket versus Bob, Cutsy versus Bear Down for the fucking playoffs. This is going to be interesting. Let the very, games very interesting. Now. In By the way, I just want to say, without having a team that I, I wasn't able to draft, injuries oh, throughout the year, I'm pretty happy I was oh. able to manage a team to get into this position. Yeah, uh, I'm just going to say this. I'm not going to make any more commentary on the fantasy season. I'm just going to let – I scored 190 points this week. Mike, <laughs> I, I have nothing left to say. I'm just going to let it roll. Bro, Whoever I, I'm, I, playing, I'm playing, it a two-week? Usually, that's, that's, that's even worse if you're playing me because I feel <laughs> like if it was a one-week thing, you could pick me off if I have a bad I, week. Uh, I will say this, two weeks, Joe, It's going to be tough. Any other fantasy that's league, I take him down. Any other fantasy league, I would say, you know, it's anybody's to win. I have never seen a fantasy football team that is so significantly better than anybody <laughs> else's team. And I hate to just pump his tires. It is unbelievable what he has done with that rock. It is, it is you, actually, Thank you, Bob. he has made moves that nobody would, it, it's, it's great. There's not a doubt in my mind. He wins the whole thing. And this is coming from a guy who might have Thank to play you, him eventually. Whoa, Bob, I mean, you have Joe, in your Joe, I've played it's not his, about, he's being real. It's he's one being... after the other guy. I think, after... I think Team Cutsy could, could, could make a play here. I'm not saying I'm going to win, but I'm going to be competitive. Ladies team and gentlemen, Cutsy. by the way, cap locks on the on the cutsy. Yeah, team always cutsy. caps lock, always caps lock. <laughs> Ladies it's and gentlemen, back, boys. it's good to be back. Has to be back. There's nothing better. Tuesday after Tuesday, you know the drill. Joey D, Mikey V, that does it. Another edition. The Berlin Lump Show. We'll see you boys next time.